Hi guys, I just thought I'd come on today and tell you a little bit about why I haven't been posting lately. Um, I, um, I actually started working just kind of part-time and it's kind of a temporary thing. I work for like a home service company. So I go to older people's houses and help them with whatever they need help with. Or it can be sick people, people that have dementia, handicapped people, etc. And it's it's been really enriching and also super, super exhausting. Uh, so I haven't had much energy, although I've worked like three days a week. Uh, which is, a, I guess, a little more than half time, and it is it is completely different from anything else I've ever done in my life. Mm, and it's, you know, it's it's really the most stressful thing. I was like really worried about, you know, smells. I'm, I'm into smells. I have good nose, like you know, unpleasant smells and you know, d diapers and things like that, and washing people. And I, I thought that was going to be kind of the big deal. But the hard part of this job is really to just kind of to make make the schedule like to I have to go to someone's house and I have to move to the next and I sometimes I can't find parking and I might be six minutes late and then I'm kind of like delayed for the rest of the day which is like super stressful because I mean this group of people they move really really slowly if they need to go from the kitchen to the bathroom with a walker it's gonna take a good five minutes and I just have to kind of like wait I can't do anything useful while they're on their way there. So I just have to kind of like work on finding my inner calmness and there's no way I can like stress through my schedule. So it's, 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 it's been a real experience. Um, I feel super meaningful. I feel super appreciated. Um, some of them are mad though because, you know, they see a new face and they don't want new people coming all the time. But, um, you know, at least... Um, at least I'm there and I'm <laughs> someone shows up because they've had a lot of people on sick leave. That's why I kind of uh, jumped in um, um, to help them. Anyway, I just thought I would share a little bit what, but I've been, what I've been wearing lately. And I do sneak perfume at work. Uh, and so I'll tell you about those fragrances to start with here. One fragrance that I've kind of been a little bit upset about the performance, but I love the fragrance, is Fauni from Angela Campagna. It's a kind of a... Uh, there is the front. Um, it's kind of a, a bubblegummy uh, fragrance with incense. Um, it has such a beautiful opening. That opening just kind of stays for maybe like five, ten minutes, and then it kind of. It, I think it has two. I mean, two roses not listed. I think it just says florals. But when I was introduced to this fragrance, they were telling me about the the two rose in here. But it's just all wrapped up in these other florals. It has a little bit of incense in the base. It's super, super beautiful and very unique, this fragrance, but it does stay really close to the skin. And no one has told me off yet for this fragrance, so I can even sit, like we have our little morning meetings and we're all like crowded into this little room. And we just go through kind of the schedules and we look through and see, is this reasonable? And then maybe we can change things around. And then we all go gather our keys. So we're kind of really close to other people. Um, and I, and I just think that this one, I can, I can really pull this off in this environment. So I wore that a few days, actually like two or three days. Then I've also worn, this I haven't worn in a long time, is Bottega Veneta's. Um, it's called Bottega Veneta. It's, it's the one uh, that, that's marketed towards women. Uh, it's, it has, um, it's kind of a, a chypre. It has bergamot in the top and a little pink pepper. And then it has jasmine. And it says leather, but I think it's like a real, real soft suede. Um, and then there's some oak moss in the base. Otherwise, it's not considered a chypre, right? Um, this one, some people say it reminds of Iris Prima from Penhaligans. I think I brought that down because I thought if this one works, then this one will probably work as well. So I plan to also use this. This one has better, I think, um, no, they're about the same. So I know I was comparing to Fauni. This one has actually, it stays pretty close to the skin, um, but it has a certain, like, I can smell myself. And this is what I really appreciate because it gives me that little extra kind of comfort during my work day. This one I could pretty much smell on me all day. Um, I haven't done a comparison of these two like side by side. I don't find them that similar. Uh, see, this my association to Bottega Veneta is that I uh, used my mentor, who is a man, used to wear this all the time. He still loves this fragrance, and I just kind of I always thought he smelled so good, and it took years before I dared ask him what he was wearing. Um, and it was this one and he still wears this to this day and I just kind of just associated it with kind of like a rich uh, man who takes care of himself so it took a while before I could kind of like 
get myself to wear it and like feel feminine in this fragrance, but I do find it very unisex for sure. So it's not a, it's not a really masculine fragrance, but it's not either a super feminine fragrance. And I don't think Iris Prima is either. I think that's also unisex. Then one day I wore Artemisia. I think this one, this one kind of wears off by lunch. It doesn't, it doesn't have like a really long, it doesn't really have super high longevity, but it's kind of a soapy. It has a little bit of, it has a, a tea note. It has a little bit of green apple in the opening. It's really fresh. And what I love about this fragrance is it gives that off that like buttery, luxurious undertone of like something floral and luxurious. It might be the orris root. I don't know if this has orris root, but it has that like creamy, but really subtle uh, luxury. Um, when I first got this fragrance, I just got like a decant or like a little, um, little vial of it. And I would just thought, oh, this is boring. But then I just, I saw, I found myself like reaching for this like every day, which it it's so easy to wear and it fits in any, like any, you can go anywhere with anyone, uh, hang out with anybody. No one will be offended by this. Uh, so I think this is a pretty safe bet as well. Then on the way home, I've like had other things in the car. And as soon as my shift is over, I go on to like heavier stuff. And then I've been like reaching for things like, um, uh, Rosendo Mateo number seven. This is my, I, have, I did a whole video on this semi gourmand and how much I love this. It, it's a, just a really good, like patchouli oud vanilla fragrance. Um, I've been wearing it a lot. I have actually uh, decanted some of it. I really need money right now, so I sold off a little bit of it, but it's really hard to spray into little bottles. So now I have like a little funnel, but it, it, the sprayer sucks on these, uh, I'll have to be honest. But I still think it's worth the money because they're not that expensive. Um, oh, and then I have this new, or a friend left it at my house for me. It's, it's Musk Ravageur from uh, Frederick Mall. I've worn this a lot lately and I really have enjoyed it. And I haven't realized what a great fragrance this is. It's like a really nice ambery fragrance with both a little bit of animalic touches, but also it has like a gourmandish, like a syrupy quality kind of going on. It's just super satisfying. It's satisfying kind of in the same way as this one, but it's not, they're not the same at all. Um, I just think it's so, it's so well done. It's, um, Oh, I love this fragrance so much. Uh, I can see myself getting a whole bottle of this for sure. Then I've also worn, I'm dating someone right now, and the first night we met, I just wanted to mention I wore this Rosendo Mateo number seven. He said, I smell so good. But then the next time we met, he said, I smell so good too. And I'm, then I was wearing like Chanel number 19 Poudre or something like that. So I think he just kind of into me. I don't know. <laughs> but he likes, he likes fragrance. And he also has, um, I've given him some things to try. Um, I think he really much enjoys uh, Terrific Oud Extreme. Um, so this is fun. Uh, one fragrance that I smelled on him that I've realized that I'm not so into uh, is, where did I put it? So I'm probably, I, I just have a decant. It's Black Phantom from, from um, by Killian. Uh, there's something about this fragrance. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's just, it's just a little much. It's like not so refined to my nose. Um, it's like really dark. It has a kind of a, is it chocolate coffee, uh, musk? Um, it might have some oud in here. I'm not quite sure, but it's kind of like all base notes. I, I don't know. I just don't, I'm not that into it anymore. I don't know if I'll keep this and maybe bring it out again in six months, but I thought it was a little strong on him as well. Like if I, you come up close and you get that really strong, um, I think the oud is better on him for sure. Um, oh, this I've been wearing a lot too. This is Lost Alice from Mask Milano. I think it's super satisfying. Oh, and I want to tell you about another fragrance that kind of reminds me of this one, but is way better uh, and that I really want a bottle of. I don't know if I've mentioned it yet. It's Blanche Bette from Liquid Imagine... Le Liquid... No, it's called Liquid Imaginaire. It's, I guess it's a French house. Um, and the fragrance is called Blanche Bette. And it's also like a very milky fragrance. It has... It's like gourmand it has a hint of coconut it, it is kind of um similar to lost alice because this is kind of creamy it's a black tea fragrance with kind of creamy or milky with spices but that one is more i think that has a little bit of more of, of a floralness in it i don't have it anymore because I, I just i used it up so quickly i had like two milliliter and i just used it like every day until it was gone i loved it so much and the longevity was incredible 
Um, it was a 10 out of 10. Uh, and the funny thing is that my friend said I tried it at her house. She happens to have a bottle and I didn't like it like a year ago. She said, you didn't like this. And I'm like, what? So I'm like, I'm get I'm getting into gourmands now for sure. Um, I'm also like picking up on the gourmand qualities of different fragrances, like the Musk Ravageur. I never noticed that it had this kind of syrupy thing going on, at least to my nose. Um, today in the morning, I've been wearing uh, patchouli from Perfume and Roma on one arm, and then I've had uh, a little, I have uh, also Psychedelic from Javoy, and I tried them side by side, and I'll have to say they're really similar. Um, I still have, they're still going strong. Um, I think that the Perfume Aroma is a little bit, uh, a little bolder, a little deeper, a little, the, the longevity a little bit better. But I find with both of these, interestingly, interestingly enough, I think with patchouli, is that um, sometimes it doesn't smell that great when you put your nose too close. You have to kind of experience from a distance when it comes, when these little, when you get these little wafts of it. That's when you can really feel kind of like the, the whole body of it. Um, but these are kind of like, they, they're so deep and dark, they almost, they're almost kind of like a little bit like a chocolate cake with a little tiny bit of like mintiness or something cold. It's, they are incredible fragrances, both of these. I've kind of forgotten to wear patchouli lately. And speaking of patchouli, I also, another fragrance that I really, really like, and I had the opportunity to buy a bottle secondhand, but I was kind of already on my no buy. Uh, and I said, you know, I just can't, you can't, you can't own every single fragrance and I still have a little bit left, like a half a decant and it's Cacao Porcelana from Atelier Materi. Uh, I think it's Italian. It sounds Italian, right? Materi, Materi, Cacao Porcelana. It is incredible. I love this fragrance so much. I don't think this is for everyone. I, it, it's like patchouli and cacao and, oh. I, I, I think it's a beautiful comp, like a com combination of notes. Oh, I love this so much. I'm just going to cherish these last drops. The, the performance is not great on it, though. The, I, I can't really, uh, after th like two, three hours, I can't smell myself at all. I have to like go to my hand and kind of like hunt for where I sprayed it. So that kind of held me back because this is an expensive fragrance. It retails for like $250, if I remember correctly. And I don't, I can't remember if it's 50 or 100, but... It's, I mean, it's a lot of money, and it's here. It's not very accessible, so I really should have gotten it from my friend, but I missed that train. Um, I have also been enjoying Absolute Aphrodisiac from um, Inicio. This is kind of like a chocolate, vanilla, ginger, gourmand, but with animalic touches. It's a super interesting, super sexy. It's, it can be worn uh, by men or women. I really, really like this fragrance. Um, I've gone through like most of my decant here since summer. I mean, that's if I, I rotate between a lot of fragrances, this, that's that's pretty good for me. I've worn that a lot. Uh, I've also worn a lot of material from Amouage. Um, it's not super, super unique, but it's really, really wonderful. Oh yes, and I did try the other day the new um, new fragrance from Amouage Royal Tobacco. And I'm not really a tobacco lover, but I love to try the new stuff, and it, it is incredible. It's by the same uh, perfumer, Cecile Sorokian, uh, and it has like, um, I wore it on my hand like two sprays, and it's not like, it's not a beast mode fragrance like Interlude Man, but it's, it's pretty strong, um, and it, there's a lot of incense, so it's like it has the typical Amouage DNA, and the, the typical, I think, Cecile Sorokian DNA, and if you're not familiar with her. She has made uh, Tango, I think, from Mask Milano. She's made Ani from Nishane, um, Epic Woman from the same brand. Or at least she's been involved in Epic Woman. I think she worked with two other perfumers on that fragrance. Um, she's done a lot of interesting stuff. So, um, oh, she did Belle Ambre from Jacques Fat, which is kind of an inexpensive amber fragrance. A lot lighter, though, than, than these other um, like a classic ambers. But this is just... This is like a really good amber. It's kind of the same style as like amber 114 or um, what was I thinking? It's not like Le Lyon because Le Lyon has more of a birch tar. Uh, it takes off in that direction. But um, that's material. No, but Royal Tobacco has a birch tar uh, component as well. So it's smoky. It's a slight bit gourmandish. It's a little bit sweet. Uh, but it's not sweet in that way like when you combine like vanilla and tobacco and it's all kind of like, 
I still I definitely look up a word for that the opposite of transparent it's just kind of all um, mixed together in a non-refined kind of way it, it this has I just thought it had so many interesting qualities to notice and I loved 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 the dry down um, so go out and smell royal tobacco if you can uh, it, it's not cheap. It comes in a gray, kind of concrete-looking bottle. I don't love the, the presentation that much, but the, the juice is incredible. Another one from Amouage that I've been reaching for a lot is uh, Meander by uh, Meander. Uh, I said Meander Man, but there is only for men. Uh, this is kind of like, I directly start thinking about a fig fragrance, but it doesn't have fig listed. It's kind of like a creamy sandalwood. It goes kind of a little bit of an, in an earthy direction. A little bit of fruity. It's really green, so it's definitely that that fig milk um, vibe. And I'm usually I don't like fig milk that much. Oh, I think this is so good. I, I really like it. And also, I have worn uh, Santal Austral. I have a decant that I'm kind of working on. That's why I haven't touched my little tiny. I love that they sell these. Um, this is the house of, um, what's it called, Matière Premier, that they sell them in these little six milliliter bottles, and then they give you this little uh, thing you can actually put a spray head on there so you can spray it. So I've really enjoyed that too. It's kind of a, also a creamy sandalwood, but with a slight gourmandy touch. Really like that. It reminds me a little bit of Eyes Closed from Byredo, the new one. Um, actually, one of my favorite, Bi I don't like Byredo in general, but I do like um, that new one. Um, I think that one has a little, it's too, a little bit too heavy on the carrot seed. Um, this one has a little bit of that carrot seediness and I think maybe meander as well. Um, whereas I think meander is more, um, they're, they're all slightly different. They're not completely the same, but you don't need to own like all of them. I also have Piano Santal. Um, so I should probably do like a comparison and just see, you know, which one do I need full bottle of. Uh, but this one, Love from Lost Alice, has also a nice creamy sandalwood note. So I'm really much into sandalwood right now. I'm enjoying my sandalwood fragrances. Okay, and what else do I have to, to say about... Oh yeah, I have a new fragrance from Perfumum Roma. It's Vanitas. It, this is their bestseller. Um, and I have, I'll have to say, I'm, I'm, um, I thought maybe it was going to grow on me, but I think I'm kind of past this stage maybe. For me, this is just like vanilla sugar, orange flower, something a little bit cold. Maybe there's a little bit of myrrh in here, perhaps. Then I'll have to say, one fragrance that I keep in my car is Batito Dali from this same house. Because that's kind of a fragrance that I've had a little bit hard, you know, I, I don't know if I love it. But then I thought if I wear it more, maybe I'll like it more. And I think that's actually what's happened. I like it more. Because that one has a really nice myrrh note. It smells a little bit like Coca-Cola mixed with orange flower. There's a refreshing um, kind of feeling to it. And it's so much more interesting than this. This is just kind of like a vanilla, a floral vanilla. Like anybody would like. It's not bad. I just think maybe it's, it's just not, it's not intriguing to me. So I think I might try to swap this again, you know, to, for something else. I bought this secondhand, so I got a good price. I could probably sell it for the same, you know, so I'm not, I haven't lost money on it. Uh, I don't know if I've told you about this already. Silky Woods from Goldfield and Banks. Big disappointment. I don't like it. Uh, it's like a, I think it has tobacco, it has that tobacco vanilla feeling. I just had to remind myself. I mean, it's woody. It's, I don't know. It has a sweetness to it that I don't like. It's something disturbing in there. I'm just going to have to try to figure out what it is. I'll get back to you on that one. And another disappointment. Um, I'll have to say, did I not? Let's see. Maybe I left it upstairs. Um, I remember what it smells like because I had I, I just sprayed it on and I had it on last night. Okay, so it's it's a super hyped fragrance. It's from Electimus. It's called Amber Aquilaria, and I was so you know excited about trying this, but I don't know. I don't know about it. It's um, I find it super animalic in the opening, and. Um, what the other reviewers were saying is that the opening is kind of what you're paying for. The opening is the incredible part because it has like a boozy, there's a cognac note. There's some rose in there. I, ha I got, I've got some other stuff on my arms now, so I think I need to try it like just all by itself. So just consider this a first impression. My first impression is disappointment. And this fragrance is like really expensive, even in like uh, Electimus standards because um, 
I mean, niche fragrances are expensive and so are Electimus, but they're, they range from like $175 up to like over $500, I think. This, this one is like maybe 400, the dollar's gone up so much to the crown, so I'm not exactly sure, but like maybe over $400. And that's a lot for, um, I think probably like 450 for 100 mil. To me, it's so not worth it. I can't see the like, I wanted to be like really blown away because of this price and the hype and everything. And this just brings me back to the fact that I think that most of the reviewers out there are scent free bottles. They're, they're kind of like, I wouldn't say that they're bribed. They're not like forced to say anything positive to get the bottles, but they feel like they have to. So they kind of like make themselves look for that good, for the good stuff. Maybe. Um, I mean, if someone would send me like a $400, $400 bottle, and I would go online and say it smelled, it, it, it's such a huge disappointment. I just, I just wouldn't say that if, if I'd gotten the bottle for free. So, um, I can, there's, a, there's also like a fruitiness to it. Maybe that is the cognac I'm smelling. It's like a little bit of fruit. You know what I smell? It's a, it has a plum note, I think. I'm not sure this is listed. It has like a whole bunch of notes listed. Um, I mean, there's something refreshing in the top. Maybe it's bergamot. I'm not sure, but like, I think it's the, I, I have a hard time for plum and like kind of darker fruits, dried fruit, especially, and boozy is not my favorite like category of, of notes. I was kind of hoping for like an, a more interesting resinous amber and like a classic kind of amber, but that would have something really special about it because of the price, I guess. And the oud is really, I think, toned down. I don't get a lot of oud, but maybe it's that, the oud that's giving off this these animalic touches that I find a little bit too animalic, like kind of little skanky. It's not like a barnyardy oud perhaps, but it's kind of like, oh, there's something disturbing. There might be too much oak moss in there. Uh, I'm not really sure yet. I mean, I'll get back to you on this one. Maybe it'll grow on me. I really hope so. I'm not going to give up right away. Uh, then I just also wanted to mention a few more that I've really been enjoying. Oh, now I found it there. I have this decant. It's just a little one. Um, Cafe Cabanel from uh, Tio Cabanel, really much enjoying this kind of gourmandish kind of fragrance. Has a nice coffee note in there. Uh, and then I have this one from Guerlain that is kind of the same ballpark. It's called, what is it now? I almost need it because I need to read on it. It's called like Elixir Cocan something. Really long name, super, super good fragrance. Very expensive and hard to find. But if you can get your hands on it, I can't find it right now. Oh, here it is. Elixir Charnel Gourmand Coquin is the name. And this one also has a little bit, it's really gourmandish. Really, really nice. Has a little bit of animalic touches as well. Uh, it's, it's a great fragrance. I just had this little decant and I'm very much enjoying that. So I'm kind of saving a little bit those drops. Um, and then I have been wearing my Chypre Palatin and I think it's just an incredible fragrance. It's a 10 out of 10. It, this one has this, this fragrance kind of has it all. It's got kind of kind of vintage kind of quality base with like soapy, spicy fragrances, kind of like opium, obsession, you know, what was popular back in the 90s, but it also has like a super interesting kind of 2023, I have to say 2023 now. It has like a modern ambery oriental feeling as well. So, but it does have that hint of soapiness. It has a hint of... Um, it has a hint of animalicness, I guess, and it's, I, it kind of reminds me of like what I used to wear when I was young, but it's still kind of, it's a new take on that, I would say. And it, ugh, the performance is incredible. It's, I mean, it's on the verge of being a little bit sour, so I can see why people, I just sent a sample to a friend of mine, um, and she didn't like it at all. She thought it smelled like an old lady kind of, she, kind of fragrance, but the ones, I have actually shared some of it with, um, you know, sold some some decants and mostly men actually have bought this fragrance. So I hear a lot of men talking about this. I think it's considered quite unisex. I mean, it's, it's a great fragrance. So I'm going to just try to wrap this video up. Let's see if there's something I haven't mentioned. Oh, I just also got this. Um, oh, I do want to say, t talk about two more fragrances. One that I've been enjoying super much. I've worn it like a lot lately and it is Journey Woman. And it's, um, I don't usually like Osmanthus in fragrances and I'm not a leather kind of girl, but this one is so, when you wear this, it's like a floral kind of leathery, um, 
there's no incense in this one, I don't think, but it has like, it just wraps you up. And you, I feel so well perfumed when I wear this and like for like a good, like all day. Um, and I can smell myself and I think it, it kind of reminds me of uh, Amouage Sunshine Woman, but this is like way, way better. Um, I think my, I think my friend has a bottle and she's like a little on the fence about the leather note in here, but I don't find that, I just find it so, it gives just a really nice background to the rest, like the florals and I think there's some fruity notes perhaps. And I'm just really not a fruity kind of girl. It's not like a fruit, like, like designers that are fruity. I really don't like fruity designers at all. This is different. This, is, this has depth, this has femininity, this has like, I think it's just so beautiful, so beautiful, Journey Woman. And then the last one, I just got this last night. I got this in the, in the mail, um, and it's called Nabati, and it's from Astrophil and Stella. I'm going to wear this again, but I really, really thought it was an interesting take on like, it, it's kind of like an iris fragrance um, with, with some aquatic, with an aquatic feeling to it. I think it has maybe a little bit of leather. Let's see, does it have leather? It does have leather and oud, patchouli. So it's kind of like a, but it's, you know, kind of the Dior Homme line, like Dior Homme Intense, and um, it's kind of like, it's kind of like in that ballpark, but this is like more interesting to me. I have to wear this again, because I think that aquaticness with the leather iris, I, I like leather and iris together. Uh, it makes me think of that fragrance from Eldo that's called Bendelirius or something. I think that one also has that combo. Uh, and Guerlain has one, I think, called the Torrefier. Um, it, it's an, I think it's interesting. Yeah, so um, I, I recommend to, to try it. I don't know if you'll like it. This one has saffron as well and a note called Davana. I don't know about Davana. I guess I have to do some more research. Just having a lot of fun with this. And um, I do have like a real job interview tomorrow I could mention. Um, so maybe I will actually get like a, like a job that I can support myself on. Um, but I'm really enjoying working with the old people um, you know, the other day, last week, I had never even uh, driven a wheelchair. And this, you know, this customer was like, you know, just lock it. I'm like, what? <laughs> I didn't know how to lock it. I didn't know that you have to actually, if you're going around a corner, you have to kind of like take out the, you have to kind of take, make it kind of a big turn. I kind of ran into the wall. Um, I, you know, I'd never done it. It's not hard if you know how to do it. But if you never, and I, you know, emptied these cathedrals and I've, um, yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff to like learn, and I have to you have to use all these different apps. One is for parking, and one is for for your work, and one is for like you have to maybe make some medical notes that you know they didn't take their medicine or they refused to shower or whatever, and you have to maybe call their children or there's there's just a lot of stuff to learn, but they're all kind of small stuff, and everything is kind of now falling into place, and I really enjoy kind of just meeting all these old people. Um, some of them can't walk, some of them can't see, some of them can't hear very well. Um, anyway, there's this guy who's American, doesn't speak any Swedish, so I mean, it was nice to come to his house and be able to speak to him. And like, there, some of them are almost 100 years old. And I find that really fascinating and it's something that I'd like to also become myself. I wanna become 100, but I wanna be like this one lady that I visit, yesterday I visited her three times because she does need help with a lot of stuff that she can't see. Uh, she can only kind of see shadows. She's not blind, but she's like she she has to like use a, a magnifying glass, and and she um, she doesn't take a single medicine. All she has she takes is eye drops for her eye. So she does have some kind of little thing in her her eye, but like no medication at all at 96. I just think that is that is she's a role model for me. I, I think that's really cool, and she I don't know. I'm I'm just kind of blown away by these people, just meeting all these people. Being in a workplace again is also great fun and just kind of having a place to go and belonging to something. Um, yeah. So, but I do hope this interview tomorrow will work out and that I will have like a real job. Um, and also something I've appreciated is to not be stuck in front of a computer. It's, it's not who I am. I like to move around. Um, I've been on my feet like all day. And I think that my body really likes this. I'm, I mean, I've been really tired after work, but it's a good feeling. I like moving around. I like, I like getting down on the floor and I like, you know, helping people with their underwear or whatever. I don't care. I just, I wish that my, like my office jobs were a little bit more like I could move around more because I don't like to sit. 
like sit in front of a computer, sit in meetings. That's usually what I, what my jobs have been like. Uh, if you look at a, a typical work day, it's a lot of sitting. Um, so we'll see what happens. Okay. Well, that was all, that was a long video. I did a 30 minute video. <laughs> okay. Anyway, see you later.